He's back. Hi guys, sorry for the long, long hiatus. Uh, bunch of stuff. I mostly I've been working on my record, and uh, it's been quite a job. It's been literally a full time job. Whenever I uh, have free time, I'm over at the studio. I literally had to take a day off. I, I don't have any students scheduled today, and I called my producer, my co-producer, and told him, "Look, I got to take the day." Um, of course, I was a little sick this week. I had an abscess tooth. I managed to drive it away using some powerful uh, Chinese herbs and acupuncture, and now it's gone, thank God. Uh, in any case, what we're going to talk about today is the tritone substitution. Now, you might have heard me say that uh, basically, in order to be able to play tunes like the classics from the real book, uh, you need to understand blues, yes, and we haven't gotten to that system yet, but basically uh, from the viewpoint of European style harmony, um, uh, it, when you know what to do with secondary dominance, what scales to play, and I gave you that in the last le lesson, and then if you know what to do with these things called tritone substitutions, you'll have everything you need to actually play through um, uh, the classic songs of the real book. Um, that's no exaggeration. I mean, this kind of information, I try as much as I can to simplify it and bring it down to the easiest level imaginable. Now, you know, <clears throat> I'm constantly billed as a jazz guitarist, and uh, I never considered myself a jazz guitarist because uh, t in order to qualify as a jazz musician, you, there are certain prerequisites like, for example, the ability to name drop every frickin' jazz musician that ever played on a record, and being able to name, you know, all the greats from the past. And I was really never that interested in jazz. Strangely, I listen to it a lot, but it's not a particular passion of mine. I've always been a pop music guy, that's my thing. But what I like to say is that I can speak the dialect of jazz, or I can speak the language of jazz, however you want to put it. Um, and in fact, I do have gotten respect from uh, jazz musicians for my playing through jazz changes. Uh, I like the fact that I can flow over a wide palette of uh, styles and uh, uh, that sort of thing. I love that. I can play everything from blues to rock to reggae to folk to punk to, you know, I've done it all. So uh, I'm, I'm glad I have that. This is what you call a blue collar musician. These guys have played everything and those are the best guys to work with because they're so intimately experienced with all different sorts of music. Okay, so today we're talking about the tritone substitution. Aren't you glad you're learning this highfalutin term? It's going to be really cool when you uh, impress your friends with this. Um, okay, um, so uh, the thing about tritone, you know, there's always this constant yin-yang interplay in music, believe it or not. For example, on the circle of fifth, C is the exact opposite of F sharp. and F sharp and C are a tritone distance away. That's three whole steps, C, D, E, F sharp. Um, now, this yin-yang phenomenon, you know the symbol has the dot of the opposite color, like a little dot in there, like the seed of the opposite color inside. Well, the same thing is going on with tritone substitutions, except in this situation, on either side we have two dots. And I'm going to explain this right now. Now, first of all, you have to look at the interval in a seventh chord called the tritone. Um, the tritone um, would be uh, equivalent to the flat seven and the third of a dominant seventh chord. So if I play a G7 bar chord, I get uh, the B here. I'm going to play a G7 like this with my pinky over on the uh, flatted seventh here. Actually, no, I'm not. Um, any case, inside, embedded inside this bar chord, if you go to the D string, that's an F note, and on the G string is a B note. The F is the flat seven, and the B is the third of the chord. Now, as I've shown you before, the tritone is attracted up and down uh, depending on where it's sitting. So, in other words, the F is attracted down to E, and the B, the third, is attracted up to C, and this is how we get our resolution straight classical resolution. Now, as I taught you in the Greek modes, the pure Greek modes, the seventh chord was the actual um, identifier of the key. In other words, if you have a G7, in the Greek mode system, 
The G7 only belonged in one key, and that was the key of C. So all of the 12 different major keys have their own identifying dominant seventh chord. Now, given that, you would think that another seventh chord couldn't replace the function of, of a different one. In other words, like a G7 to C, you wouldn't think that another chord could replace that G7 altogether and resolve to C. But here's what happened. This is how the music theorists must have been thinking. This tritone, F to B, exists in one other dominant seventh chord, and that would be D flat seven. All right? Now, here's our F and here's our B. Now, in D flat seven, uh, we say uh, D flat, F, A flat, and C flat. Now, a lot of guys like to joke about B sharp and C flat not being real notes, but in fact, they are theoretically real in the sense that you have to build a chord in thirds. So you have to go C, E, G, B. In the case of D flat, D flat, F, A flat. You couldn't say B because B is is not a third, but C flat would be considered a third. And in other words, when you jump over the letters, if that makes any sense at all. In any case, this D flat seven has the same tritone as G seven. Now here's where the yin yang comes in, where the F was the flatted seventh in the G seven, the F is now the third of the D flat seven. Where B, was the third of G7 now becomes the flatted seventh of D flat seven. But bottom line is we still have this tritone interval and the same desire to attract down and up happens within that interval. Except now, I'll give you an example. A two, five, one on the key of C would be, let's say D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. So we get. All right, now. That you're probably wondering what the tritone sub sounds like. I replace the G7 with this tritone substitution. All right. Um, and one of the giveaways, if you're analyzing a piece of music, one of the giveaways of a tritone substitution is that if it resolves, which it doesn't have to, but if it resolves, it will resolve down a half step. All right. All the tritone substitutions do that. So there's that yin yang happening, and interestingly, the chord G7 and the chord D flat 7, they're a tritone distance apart, the uh, roots, okay? G, A, B, D flat, or a C sharp, okay? One whole step, two whole steps, three step, whole steps. All right, now, uh, Just to, to put it on a chart here so you can see the actual notes, G, B, D, F is G7, D flat, F, A flat, C flat is D flat 7, in parentheses B because they're in harmonic, they're the same note, okay? Now here's the third of the G7 is B, and the flat 7 of D flat 7 is C flat, which is B, they're both B. And then the uh, flatted seventh of uh, uh, G7 is F, right? And the third of D flat seven is F. So they reverse roles, just like in the yin yang symbol, there's a seed of the opposite inside of each one. Okay. Uh, all right, wow, okay. Now, what I wanna show you is, uh, since you learned about secondary dominance and you have the whole idea memorized, what I did was I, um, I put the, here's the key of C in the center. So we have C, D minor, E minor, F, uh, 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 G7 and A minor and B diminished, right? Those are the chords of C. Here are the secondary dominants that resolve to the chords of C. G7, A7, B7, C7, D7, E7. And here are the chords that substitute out those chords. D flat seven, as we were just talking about, replaces out G7. And notice it goes a half step down to C, all right? E flat seven goes a half step down to D minor. It's replacing the A flat. And by the way, all of these are a tri tritone distance apart. A to E flat is a tritone distance. A, B, C sharp, D sharp, which is E flat, all right? Every single one of these has that property. So there's something weirdly magical about this tritone interval. 
and leave it to the church to call it the devil's interval. I think it rocks, but uh, you know, and I'm no Satanist, but I think the sound totally rocks. So in any case, here's the interesting deal, is if we took these uh, six roots, G, A, B, C, D, E, right? Uh, and we looked at the chromatic scale, uh, G, A, uh, B, C, D, and E. What we have left is D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, right? D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat. So basically, what I'm saying here is that in any one key, you can use one of 12 dominant seventh chords and it will have a function within that key. This is why I say over and over again, all the action in jazz happens on the seventh chord. When a seventh chord pops into your song that doesn't belong to the key it's, uh, you're in, you know immediately you're going to have to change your scale. You're, you're required to. Now, um, what is the scale that you play? Now, uh, good news and bad news is that there's only one scale you need to know for any uh, tritone substitution chord, okay? Uh, the bad news is there's no such thing as a through scale with tritone substitution chords, all right? Um, so, uh, now, the, the scale you'll need to learn is called the Lydian flat seven scale, and obviously it's a hybrid of the Lydian scale and the Mixolydian scale. It's a major scale with a raised fourth up a half step and a lowered seventh down a half step, okay? Now, just to give you an idea, um, this is a, a resolution 251 without the tritone substitution. And I might as well lay it down on a loop so you can hear the C scale when I play through. start throwing in blue notes and uh, uh, that sort of thing so all right now what I'm going to do is the same progression except I'm going to substitute out the G7 for a D flat 7 and here we go D minor 9 D flat 9 which is a 7th C major 7 Before I, I solo through this, on the D minor and the C major, I can play a C major scale, but when that D flat 9 comes in, I have to play the D flat Lydian flat 7 scale. So here's a major scale, D flat major, and I'm going to raise the 4th and flat the 7th. It's a beautiful scale, by the way. It sounds so nice in certain contexts. Now, so now I'm going to demonstrate that sound. Here we go.
right, so you could hear how lovely that scale is. And by the way, you might have heard me do an arpeggio. What's cool about this is you get a sharp 11 in your arpeggio. So what I did was a D flat 9 sharp 11. <laughs> future uh, I may in the future uh, work with you guys on arpeggios and uh, some of my arpeggio system and stuff like that now a real-life example night in Tunisia okay uh, so the jazz standard I'm going to play uh, just the, now the chords are E flat 7, I'm going to play 9, and D minor 7, I'm going to play D minor 9, and um, now if we try to, we find, if we look for what this was substituting, all you have to do is a tritone interval on your guitar, this shape, and E flat goes to A, so the E flat 9 is substituting out for the A7, now listen to A7 result to D minor. So now the D flat 7 is substituting, and that's the chords for 9 in Tunisia. I'm adding 9s into both chords. So let's hear that. you have to master 21 scale shapes. This boils down to actually three different scales. The major scale with all of its array of Greek modes, the harmonic minor scale with its array of modes, even though they're not technically modes, basically being able to play harmonic minor on, from every degree of the scale on the guitar. For example, if I start uh, E harmonic minor on its G note, I get this shape. Uh, I started on the uh, on the A note I get this shape and so on and so forth so that would be seven modes of the harmonic minor and finally seven modes of the melodic minor now why well the Lydian flat 7 scale is based on the fourth step of the melodic minor scale okay so if you learn your melodic minor scale you're already working with the Lydian flat 7 and in fact, uh, let's see. Yeah, if I did uh, instead of uh, D, uh, oh, is that, was I call this D flat Lydian flat? It's E flat Lydian flat seven. My apologies. Damn. E flat Lydian flat seven. I'm so sorry. Going down to D minor nine. All right, now. Uh, I can, instead of playing the E flat Lydian flat 7 scale, I can play the B flat melodic minor scale. E flat is the fourth step of B flat melodic minor. It's the same exact frickin' scale. Okay, so, um, wow, so 21 scale shapes, all right. Uh, one thing you could do is if you learn your Greek modes, what you do is, uh, let's say in G, its relative minor is E minor and the tweak note would be a D sharp. So for all of your modes, when you uh, run into a D, you replace it with D sharp. same thing from melodic minor except now you're changing the C to a C sharp and the D to a D sharp which you get. All right 
right, so um, pretty much that. Uh, I don't think there's much else I could say about this. What we're going to do in the future is since like we've completed the jazz course, um, in a sense, what we're going to do in the future is talk about vertical harmony, how to stack chords, how to build them. We're going to talk about uh, four note chord theory and all sorts of other goodies. And I'm going to be getting into more guitar specific things as well. Uh, sequences, um, uh, nuances, how to use various nuances, that sort of thing. So that's going to be it for today. Missed you guys, uh, though I've never met a single one of you in real life, or maybe I've met one or two. Oh, I have a few friends that are watching now, so three or four. Anyway, take care, have a great one, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.